Today here on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive, we're behind the wheel of the 2018 Audi S5. Now this is a third of a trio of Audis we've had in for review. And we're not tired of driving Audis. They're that good, but you probably already knew that. So after having recently driven the TTRS, how does the S5 compare in the sense of, is it too close? Does it differentiate itself enough? How is this thing in general? That's what we're gonna find out today on this episode of rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So unfortunately though, we've had this vehicle for a week, We've only been able to drive it for a few days and you know just under a couple hundred miles. Reason being is we were out of the country. Uh, had to go to Canada to announce the Canadian Superbike Series and can't take press cars across the border. Well, most of the time and it's usually not worth the hassle even if you can just because. So we've only had about two and a half, three days with this thing, but have put enough miles into it, onto it and I think we got a pretty decent take on it. Um, of course, this is gonna be new for 2018, new chassis, although it does have some peculiarities which Audi still doesn't fix, chassis-wise, or layout-wise, I guess. But those are relatively minor. They're more like, really, why are you still doing this? Uh, what we have here is the S5 um, with a few nice trim packages here. Now, when I say I'm comparing this to the TTRS, here's why I say that. As equipped and delivered and we're driving it, this comes in at uh, right at $65,000, uh, or just under 65, 64, 750, which is right about the base price of a TTRS. So, and then if you watch our TTRS review, which we'll link up here for you, you'll know that a lot of the uh, items that were on the TTRS were like, like, yeah, get out of that, get that out of here, because it took a what would be a pretty good value at 65 grand up to 80,000, at which point you're like, eh, I don't think so. So there's that contrast there. Now, right away, the S5 is a larger vehicle, larger inside, larger outside, has more room. This has back seats that you actually physically could put people into. It'd be tight, but you, they could fit back there. In the TTRS, there were back seats, but you couldn't fit anyone back there, period. It was, it's more of a package shelf, and it's four seats for insurance reasons. But uh, this, you can put, like I said, you can put people back there. It's tight, but, you know. Uh, the one option this does have is this nice $1,200 or $1,300, like, real Napa leather and I dig it. Um, I love the red color in this. I'm not one of these people like, oh, the spec, the spec, the spec. But in this particular case, I love the color of the red here. And then of course, Audi's uh, signature quilted, quilting uh, uh, stitching, which makes for a very nice package. The seats are okay, but they're not that fabulous. This does have a massaging feature in it, but I would gladly, gladly trade that massaging feature for a little more lower lumbar support. Um, it lacks a little bit. Uh, you drive us for a few hours and you're gonna be moving around just a little bit. It's not, it's not uncomfortable, but you're hoping it, it, it's just not quite as comfortable as other vehicles in the Audi, in the Audi range, like, oh, say, the Q5, which we drove for hours and hours and hours down to Virginia. Powering this is a turbocharged three liter V6, 354 horsepower and uh, 360 something, 369 on the torque. If we're, if we're off by that much, we'll annotate it. It's an excellent engine. Um, in previous years, the S versions of these were supercharged. This is now turbocharged. The response in it is quite good. There's really no turbo lag. You really can um, like stab at the throttle and the acceleration is there immediately for you. Uh, it has an eight speed uh, transmission. It's good, uh, like all of these things, they're much better when you put it in sport than drive as far as driving dynamics. 
in in just regular drive it's upshifting as quickly as possible there's your start stop you put it into sport and it's just the shifts are crisper they're more where you want interesting item is that we were cruising down the highway and looked at you know 80 ish uh kind of standard cruising uh speed on the highways around metro detroit here and looked over and I'm like okay what are we about 2000 rpm just because that's about where cars turn the, these days for rpm at cruising speeds and we saw it was closer to three I'm like what's up with that oh we're in sport uh, pull it back once again it goes to the drive yes 2000 rpm in which case we were getting like a little over 31 miles to the gallon at 80 miles an hour uh, so two things to note one really it doesn't upshift it's fine that it up doesn't upshift immediately but at highway speeds when I think the computer could figure out that it was cruising along on the highway you'd think it eventually gets to top gear but it didn't um, and then it was so quiet that you didn't really notice you were turning an extra thousand rpms that you didn't really need to so um, it speaks for how nice this cabin is back to the engine turbocharged v6 you're thinking oh it's not going to sound all that great and unfortunately I'm in a residential area here so I can't exactly stomp on it or, or do the launch control here but it has a nice tone to it anyways right and the other thing about the acceleration on this it's good um, I mean it's a factory rated at 4.6 uh, 0 to 60 that's probably a fair statement the one thing you do notice especially on the highway if you're doing some overtaking or let's say you stab the throttle uh, to get around some cars as lanes narrow as we did a little earlier today you can feel it in your neck like it's 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 not like shoving you in the chest but it has a sustained pull where you're like okay yes you can like you're holding you can physically feel yourself holding your neck up because of the sustained pull of the power now this has a bunch of carbon trim in it. It's nice, it's 500 bucks extra. Honestly, I could take it or leave it. I'm not that excited about carbon trim. It's not like it's doing that much other than decoration in here. Uh, it has Apple CarPlay, it's worked fine. This has the Bang & Olufsen system, as more, uh, the, the higher end with like 3D sound and some other stuff that really makes it sound worse. Uh, you turn all that off and it is a pretty good sounding stereo system here and it's one thing I noticed in this particular version once especially when you turned everything off um, if you have some less than stellar mp3s you're listening to you're gonna find out just how bad the compression or the recording is because this uh, pulled out some stuff I really weren't expecting to on um, I forgot what we're listening to now. I think it was I think it was a remastered version of Dark Side of the Moon, a digital remaster, and it just like wow, it's a little harsh in a couple spots. Just again, it's a thing. If you watch us, you know that we tend to be a little particular on stereo systems because enjoy music, enjoy when it sounds good, and yeah, that's great. Then you're on a back road carving and you get a lot of good engine noise to drive to, but. Man, turn up the. I'm, I'm from the era like go fast, turn up the, turn up the stereo, and just jam along that way. Ride quality in this is, how do you like it? Um, we have it in an individual mode right now where we have the suspension set and comfort and everything else sort of firmed up, and it's just about right. You can uh, put this in regular comfort and it softens everything up. It makes it a, the steering almost a little too, too edgy. Um, we're here where we have it tweaked. Um, it sort of, I'd say, dulls the, dulls it'll, the the steering just the just a little bit, so it's not quite as sensitive as you were, uh, say, changing lanes or, or making moves. Uh, in the firmest setting, it's fine. I mean, it, you you definitely feel it's firm. If you're on smooth roads, it's great. If you're on choppy pavement, eh, it's okay. You're, it's not objectionable, but. Hey, why, why beat yourself up if you're just commuting? You put it in a comfort side, comfort mode and, and you'll be just fine or dial in your different uh, individual settings. So base price, 54,600. This has the Daytona Pearl, Daytona Gray Pearl effect paint, 575. 
The uh, navigation package for $2,600, you're probably going to get that. Uh, the S Sport package, which is red calipers, sport adaptive suspension, and the sport rear differential. Sport differential, it's another $2,500. That's probably worth it. The fine Napa leather interior, we said at twelve at uh, twelve hundred fifty bucks, you should definitely get that. The Bang and Olsen system, nine fifty, eh, okay. And then this has um, summer tire, nineteen inch tire package. Skip it, I guess, eight hundred bucks. They're nice, but whatever. Um, and then the carbon inlays are five hundred bucks. Destination and all that, sixty four seven fifty. Uh, so, if you, all you're going to do is you want a sporty vehicle, sporty vehicle for mostly commuting and long road trips or just road trips, this is probably a better choice than the Audi TT RS. Uh, it's be mostly because it's a little bit larger and you can carry a, a little bit more. Yes, it's not gonna be any, it's not gonna be as fast. It's 600 pounds heavier and down, uh, you know, 50 horsepower. So yeah, it's not gonna be as fast. The V6 on this thing, uh, the back of the engine in Audi tradition, the back of the engine block is right in line with the front axle line. I don't know why Audi continues to do that, but all that weight extra over the nose is, you know, going to hamper it. The TTRS doesn't have that issue. Um, but as a daily driver, man, this thing is just great. I've driven it just enough to understand that it makes a good noise. It accelerates fine. I mean, it's got plenty of acceleration to keep you entertained. I like this car a lot as a difference between this and the R TTRS. Well, what's your purpose? If you're just commuting and maybe occasionally going to do a track day or something, this probably makes more sense than a TTRS. But if you want the hardest core Audi you can buy without, you know, spending $160,000 on an R8, the TTRS is, is not a bad choice. But man, if you're in that $100,000 plus income level and you're looking for a nice two-door personal luxury coupe that's sporty and be fun and going to be great to drive then yeah this is this is going to be great you're not going to be buying it you're going to be leasing it at probably 600 bucks a month and i think that's a pretty fair value there's not much else out there in the market these days other than say uh you know maybe a, a mercedes c-class coupe um, maybe not the full AMG, but like a C43 that's probably close to the equivalent of this. Um, BMW, what are, what are we talking, what is it this week? A three series, or wait, four series is the coupe, sorry. Oh, three series, yeah. Evens are the coupes, the odds are the four doors. Still, whatever. Um, I just, this to me is, I'd, I'd prefer this over the BMW. It's just a personal decision. If you're, if you're a BMW person, you can buy the BMW and you're not even going to think twice about the Audi. And that's fine. Um, this probably more versus the Mercedes. I'm kind of a Mercedes guy, to be honest with you, but um, I'd probably choose this over the Merc. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give us a th thumbs down twice. Uh, like, share, subscribe. And we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10-Minute Test Drive.